What would make this an especially meaningful conversation for you today? Um, I think just basically giving me more clarity on different general questions that I have about both when I should be testing, um, how I should be studying, and just little things like that, that I've noticed that maybe would be a little bit more personal to me in the way that I study and the way I learn best. Sure, absolutely. So let's dive right in. So the question of when should you be testing? What, are you, what options are you considering right now? Well, originally I rushed to finish my degree in August so I could jump straight into LSAT studying, which I did. I bought a bunch of different power score books, started using initially their study plans and all that. But then I feel like the studying wasn't really progressing very well. And I was aiming for the November 25th LSATs, which I know today would be by midnight, be the deadline for that. And the more I progress, the more I feel I'm just not going to be ready for the November LSATs whatsoever. So then I was considering January, but then I was thinking that it'll be too late, especially with most admissions on a rolling basis. By the time I can actually do the LSATs in January, get the score, get everything in, it cuts it really close to the deadline dates. So, right. So if you were going to apply this cycle, ja the January LSAT is the last LSAT I would recommend you take. It's okay to take that LSAT though, but you've got to give it your all over the next few months. Okay. Is that something you think you're, you're able to do to really commit yourself fully these next three months? I'm not sure, honestly. Okay. And that's, that's good that you're aware of that because three months is the absolute minimum I would recommend studying. And so if you're not sure about whether you can fully commit yourself all out the next three months, it might make more sense to instead take the LSAT in the spring or the summer and apply next cycle. Yeah, that was my following question because more and more I've been reading the different posts online and asking questions. A lot of people have been saying, well, you should be taking at least six months. And initially I thought that three months would be more than enough for me. But when I really dived into everything, I don't think so anymore. So I think I would prefer to take six months and then aim for the September 2021 admissions. So if I did take longer, when would be the optimal time for me to actually take the LSATs? Sure. So right now we're in October. You could take six months and take it in April or even take it in June if you want. I was especially concerned about the idea of doing it in January because the holidays are a really busy time. We've got Thanksgiving ahead of us and the entire holiday season with Christmas, New Year's, a lot of vacations, a lot of holidays, family obligations, and then people get sick in the winter too. So yeah. it might be better instead go for the spring or the summer. So I would say either take it in April or take it any of the other dates around the spring and summer. Then you have the option to retake later if you need to. You could take it again in the fall if you, if you want or if it would help you and then apply at the very beginning of the next cycle. Okay, so this brings me to my next question about the actual exams, since now it's on the digital formats. So, for example, like when I'm solving on paper, I like to like highlight, underline different things, different scribbles. How is I guess that still possible on the digital ones? I heard it's a tablet. There's you have the stylus pen, whatever. But does it look the same as the paper ones? Is it a different format? Uh, can you write on that screen with this? Pen, like what is it? What, how does those, it work? Yeah, those are, those are all great questions and they're very natural questions. The answer is that there are some tools meant to simulate the highlighting and underlining that you might do on paper, but they're not the most responsive. I, the stylus is not that great either, so I wouldn't really count on being able to do that. I would instead use the booklet of scratch paper that they will give you, use that to the side and do all your writing there with a pen or a pencil. Okay. You cannot actually draw on the tablet itself. Like you can't write notes on the screen. That just isn't a functionality that they offer. Okay. So then while studying now, I should get used to writing any notes on the side then and not exactly on the questions. Exactly. So basically treat your prep books like they are a screen and that you cannot write on them at all. Just do all your writing in the booklet on the side. And you could also actually familiarize yourself with the digital format on LSAC's site at okay. familiar.lsac.org. They actually have a few exams in the digital LSAT style. So you can actually see for yourself exactly what it looks like. And you can do that on a computer, but it's even better if you actually use a tablet. Any tablet's fine. You can use an iPad or a Samsung or whatever to, to see what it will be like for you. Okay, perfect. So I'll definitely do that. I'll do it on my iPad. It'll 
definitely answer a lot of questions. And this would lead me to actual more personalized questions about my own studying. For example, I'm a person who I learn better when I see it and then I do it. So with all my power score books that I have, I have the workbooks, I have the training books, and then the really thick books with a lot of writing, a lot of reading, I mean. And I try to go through them. I go through them slowly, which ends up taking way more time than I ever think it's going to take. But I really want to retain the information as I'm going through them. So I feel like I waste a lot of time doing that and then not a lot of time practicing. And I know I learn better by practicing and by doing and seeing it as I go. So I was wondering if you have any tips, hints, tricks, anything on that that could help me to maybe, you know, optimize and make my studying a little bit more efficient because I'm using so much time right now and just the reading things and trying to retain that information about it without actually practicing. Yeah, absolutely. So it sounds like you have a lot of material, a lot of textbook like resources, hundreds and hundreds of pages. And so if that doesn't work for you, there are two other things that occur to me. You said that you learn by doing and you learn by watching. So mm -hmm. doing would be getting actual old LSAT exams and just doing practice problems. You can drill questions by type and you can also just do full individual sections or full length timed exams. And that's after you've learned some of the theory, which it sounds like you've already done. Mm -hmm. You can get most of the exams in books of 10 on Amazon for about 20 bucks each. They're called actual official LSAT prep tests. I have some of them. I, have, I tried to get all of my materials before I started studying just to make sure I would have everything and then I didn't want to get to something or want to change something up. Let's say go to reading comprehension or something and not have it. So I really invested in all the books at once, which is also a little bit overwhelming sometimes. Right. Like, what should you start with if one section isn't going well? It's like, should I put it down and go to, let's say, logic games instead and then come back to the other ones I was having more trouble and not clicking with? Right, right. So you might also want to have some sort of study plan or plan of attack to help you make use of all the resources that you have. And so one thing I have on my site are day-by-day -day study plans showing yeah. you exactly what to do every single day over the course of your prep. It'll generally involve reading a chapter in a book, watching a video, reading a short article, then doing practice problems of that type out of the exams. So you might want to get one of those. And the other thing I would say is videos. Are you using any video resources? Um, your videos are the ones I came across. So I started watching yours as much as I can to get information there. But video wise, that's about it. Cool. All right. So you've got some videos out there. I have a ton on my channel, obviously. Yeah. If you want more, I do have full video courses that cover every section of the exam, really bite-sized, concise for the theory section of things. So if you want to learn ordering games, grouping games, logical reasoning question types, I have them boiled down to their essence in very short videos. Then I also have live online classes and Q&A sessions, as well as group coaching calls, where you can actually get on video yourself and meet with other like-minded students and myself as well. So that's some other options if you really want some more interactivity and engagement, and then you want on-demand videos as well, because that could be a bit easier to do than reading hundreds of pages out of a book. Yeah, I think so. I think it would help save a lot of time as well. So I'll definitely check that out. So I was following the Power Score uh, three month study plan and it just wasn't working for me. Like I had read, plan to study at least 10 plus hours per week. I was like, that's no problem at all. I'm done my degree. I didn't start work so I could focus only on this. So I have the time, but then everything just ends up taking way longer than I anticipate and what I think it will because I end up going so slowly through everything to really retain it and understand it to be able to apply it. So I'll definitely check out your study plans. Sounds like it might be a better idea for me. Um, let me see, I wrote down a couple of questions. I think that was about it for my general questions of basically just what you th would think would be the best approach for me to go through, being as I learn best by seeing and by doing. Yeah, so. sure, fantastic. Well, I think it's great that you have so much time available to you because you have six plus months to really figure out what's going to work best for you. And so I'd say, yeah, if the books aren't working, consider some other resources as well. And of course, if you, if you have any questions on the courses or the study plans, you can always feel free to reach out after you investigate a bit more. Okay, perfect. My pleasure, Lisa. Great. Any other questions for today? I'm trying to think while I have you here. Um, not for the moment, I don't think. I'm sure I'm going to have more eventually. As I continue, like at the moment, since I decided, okay, I'll take longer to study, I really sort of decided I'm going to take a little mental break right now. 
from the studying because after studying for the full past year full time including the summer to rush out finish my degree like i feel like my brain needs a little break so yeah totally understandable you've got you've got the time so definitely take advantage of it what would you say is the biggest insight you got from our call today biggest insight i got from our call is i guess just how to approach things and how to sort of look at them for a way that will work a little bit better for me I feel a lot better knowing that January is not too late if that's what I want to do because I really asked around, I looked around, commented, posted, and I could not get clear answers out of anybody. Some people like, absolutely not, absolutely yes. There's a million and one answers everywhere for everything that contradict one another. So that definitely clarifies and makes me feel a lot better. I know it's an option. I'll definitely try for like perhaps for January even, but Ideally, I'll end up taking longer. I think it'll be better in the long run to be able to apply when admissions just 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 open the following cycle and have the strongest application possible with the highest score. Exactly. Awesome. Great, Elisa. Well, I'm really glad we connected. And again, please keep in touch as you move forward. And I'll hope to see you in the courses if that's the right option for you. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.